Welcome back to another episode of Animal of the Week. Today we're looking at a very aptly named sea slug called the alpaca of the sea, owing to its strong resemblance to alpacas and the fact that they live in the sea. Obviously this fitting name is but a nickname, and no self-respecting scientist is going to be calling it that. Instead they opt for the rather more complex and boring name Nembrotha cirrostata. Nembrotha is a genus of marine slugs of various different shapes and sizes. One key aspect of this genus is that all the slugs are very colourful and possess the little appendages on their back, which gives the alpaca of the sea the look of a little saddle or some sort of cargo, just like what an alpaca might carry up a mountain. It is also unsurprising that they are classed as nudibranchs. Remember that this is a distinction that has to be made because not all sea slugs are actually nudibranchs. They are found in shallow waters in the Indo-Pacific area of the world's oceans, usually no deeper than 20 metres, but no shallower than 3, as this is the prime sort of depth for the life-giving coral reefs that they live on to thrive at. The nudibranchs require coral or rocks or some sort of debris in order to avoid predators and also to find their main food source which only lives in these sorts of areas. That food source is being tunicates. Tunicates are marine invertebrates found in many reef systems that are just sort of there. Like sponges or corals, they are simply organisms that grow in place, filter feeding on passing nutrients in the water. They make the perfect prey for the alpacas of the sea, as they have very few defences and are easy to crawl over and bite into. Tunicates are actually a favourite feud of many hundreds of different nudibranchs, and you can see why. Widely abundant in the same sort of reef habitats and largely immobile, which is great when when your average nudibranch doesn't exactly break the sound barrier. Alpacas of the sea, like many nudibranchs, are hermaphrodites, and therefore possess both male and female genitalia. However, many mistake this to mean that they are also asexual in their reproduction, and while physically they might be able to reproduce purely with themselves, like many nudibranchs, they see the benefits of genetic diversity, and so will aim to mate with other members of their species, which can be great, as if both members are impregnated, then that doubles the rate of reproduction. However, it is unknown if they take part in penis fencing, but it is certainly a plausible possibility, in which case there would be a dominant individual who would fight to give the burden of pregnancy to the weaker individual, but we haven't really observed them enough to see yet. When hatched, they will grow to a maximum length of about 55mm, so really not big at all. The bright, almost neon blue of the alpaca of the sea has a very specific purpose. They are a form of aposmatism. Aposmatism is just a fancy word for coloration to denote danger and ward off predators. It is thought that they might secrete a sort of acid from their bodies in order to make good upon this defensive warning, like many other nudibranchs have been observed to do. However, this is not confirmed. Like most of your standard nudibranchs, they also possess two rhinophores in their head appendages. These rhinophores are sensory organs used to detect odours around them, guiding them to their tunicate prey and detecting any potential threats. The almost leaf-like structures on their back are their branchial plumes. These are essentially their gills and allow them to absorb oxygen from the water around them. Obviously if they go to such lengths to present themselves as dangerous to be eaten, there must be something trying to eat them, which isn't at all surprising as they are only about 55mm long and very soft and fleshy. Interestingly, one of the biggest threats to the alpaca of the sea is other members of its own species or other nudibranchs that will try and kill them for food or maybe even territory. Other than that, it's been known that sea turtles take shots at nudibranchs, large fish, crabs, basically anything really. But in the end, the biggest threat to these alpacas is just their lifespan, because they only live for a year so they have to get breeding quickly. It has been observed that these alpacas have been captured for pets as they are quite colourful, but in general nudibranchs are seen as pests to exotic fish owners so there is not really a very big trade in them. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it and if you'd like to see more from us.